Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called Long Beach. It's a 12 by 24, and I completed it uh, a couple days ago. Uh, I don't mind telling you, it was a real struggle. And um, we'll be talking about why and what I've done, what I did, uh, and how um, the mighty fall, you know. Um, as we get through this video and things I think uh, that you can do to sort of uh, deal with it when a painting is going south and not going well um, yeah anyway uh, 12 by 24 is a little big for me and I I do uh, uh, well almost every painting can be a struggle in a small or large ways uh, one of the reasons you see me pursuing seascapes uh, so many is that um, there's a lot of disciplines involved with painting the sea and the, and the seaside that I haven't mastered. And um, now on the other side of that is, uh, you know, over the years I've had students come to me and say, I can't paint water, you know. Or say, I can't paint flowers or I can't paint faces or whatever it is they think they can't paint. And my retort has always been the same. Um, my reply um, is, uh, you, can pay, you can paint or draw anything. It's all just shapes. That's true. And I'm not saying that's not true. However, uh, mastering a painting and landscape is going to require some different skills and uh, approaches than mastering, say, a still life. Yes, they're both um, containing shapes, and yes, you can take a skill set developed uh, by doing one and apply it to the other. This is all true, but um, if let's just say you are a landscape painter, you know, and you go into painting florals, um, you're not going to be as good at that in no way. Maybe if you're like Vincent Van Gogh, yeah. You might be uh, able to do all that but for the rest of us there's little traps and little things so what what happened to me on this painting so I've been I haven't done a many seasides over the last uh, 13 years of my full-time painting journey um, a lot of interior scenes a lot of trees and um, trees and paths and you know the kind of thing I normally do fields um, the thing is with the seaside uh so there's a couple things that are uh you know you got to watch out for and it's the water it's the waves and what bit what really bit me on the um bottom on this painting was these waves you can see them drawn in there and at one point i believe you'll briefly see them painted in now all that whole section's been deleted because they didn't work they didn't work at all and funny enough i uh I'm going to get into um, what was happening with that and it's the realm of self-deception okay self-deception is a problem anywhere in your life if you um, can uh, tell yourself something uh, and believe it and it's not necessarily true that's definitely not a good place to be it's not um, and there will be ramifications for the this um, sort of activity uh, either great or small you know um, in the realm of art, the uh, ramifications are going to be pretty obvious that uh, you're going to be doing paintings that aren't as good as you think they are. And that's a problem. You don't want that. You want to be able to acknowledge and uh, deal with uh, when you fall short. And sometimes you fall short in small ways. In fact, I mean, almost any painting you'll fall short in small ways. And if it's nothing uh, that major, it's still the good painting. It's fine. Go ahead put it in the gallery sell it you know uh, it'll be part of your legacy and um, people with developed eyes uh, in the future will maybe see these things and go hmm well, okay he didn't get that <coughs> pardon me <clears throat> exactly right but he was a good painter he did a good job and this is an appealing painting uh, I like it you know uh, where and then we get people like um, like the the Russian landscapes, Isaac, uh, I want to say Levithin, but I'm a pretty bad, uh, who's really maybe the best ever, 
you know, uh, uh, several other people like that. You can't say that about a George Ness, unfortunately, as much as I love George. Uh, quite often he, uh, he was doing his, uh, his impression of Icarus and flying too close to the sun and then his, uh, you know, the wax holding his wings together would melt and he would fall. And uh, if you're not familiar with uh, that um, myth um, or mythical story, uh, it's a good one to check out because we often will do that. And um, so for my part, uh, I painted it and I, I knew that wave. I was I, I composited those waves into the reference image, which, by the way, you can see all of that in the members area. This video in the members area. It's uh, over nine hours long. I, I I don't know how many of the of my lovely members will actually get around to watching that. But keep in mind, you can always speed it up. Also, you have a, a mouse, so you can you can jump around too. Um, yeah, and then uh, you know I'm I'm questioning it even as I'm doing it. And the funny thing is, like maybe you've uh, experienced this. Like um, I did a real good job of painting the white water. It was just too big in the wrong spot wrong perspective etc so on and so forth um, but I could I could look at that and I go well I did pretty good with that effect you know so uh, as I pointed out in uh, many many videos and I, I guess uh, you know it's maybe not a popular message I, I don't know but painting is really hard to do the struggle is very real and um, th there's so many ways to go off the rails. I, I do think the number one way to go off the rails is composition, and that's what transpired here. It just was a problem. Um, also, uh, a bad effect, you know. Um, anyway, I'm not crying about it. Uh, I was able to pull it out and do something that I think looks really good. Still not uh, maybe as perfect as uh, I might have liked, but um, I was so uh, enthralled with the way that I'd managed to paint that little peninsula that had the clouds dappling over it um, that I felt that I had to bring I had to bring the um, the the rest of the painting up up to something close to that level. Also, I don't mind saying uh, the sky itself was okay. Oh, hey, my book. <laughs> I talk about this stuff in my book, you know, and um, the book is uh, there for you. Sixty dollars U.S. contains uh, the distillation of my um, painting journey for the first, uh, say, 11, 12 years and a lot of great info in there for you. So check it out if you're interested there. Anyway, getting back into this, you can see uh, we're working on the beach. Uh, we've done that little peninsula. Pretty soon I'll be doing those background mountains. I was real happy with the effect I got there. I had the depth, I had the distance, I had the aerial perspective. Uh, did a good job on the beach. Uh, I, I liked the uh, way I painted the rocks. I dealt with that grassy area in the foreground just right. Um, if you look at the reference, I you could have got I could have gotten the weeds there <laughs> literally, um, and overpainted there, made it too uh, too much of a focal point. But I wanted the focus to be where the light's hitting that distant part of the peninsula, and uh, that's and, and the the painting there is 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 very good. And um, you know uh, I try to. Uh, um, surf a line between getting super rendery, super uh, accurate, etc., and also just having expressive um, strokes that are um, representing my how I see things and how I experience them and feel them. And so, uh, you know, it would be uh, if, like, if say you're one of these photo real guys. You've got, in some ways, uh, you've got a lot to do uh, to make to make the uh, the painting look like a photo. Um, but another way, uh, you can just relax and not worry too much about um, the artistry or composition of things as much. You just better make sure that you are, you know, recreating a photo in paint uh, that is worthy uh, of uh, all of that. Yeah. Um, I've been picking up a lot of tips and tricks uh, as far as painting seascapes go. Um, and here I knew uh, my, that my problem was in my original reference image. The waves were very quiet and I wanted more. I wanted more 
pizzazz. But um, when I painted it all in, it was majorly distracting. It looked false and um, uh, in spite of my best efforts. And that's the other thing I want to maybe mention a bit. You know, you've got to try. You've got to work hard. Um, but hard work alone won't create good paintings, you know. And um, sometimes you're just going to fail. Ah, we've just uh, moved past the whole... Uh, those waves were just eliminated. So that it doesn't look like much changed from your standpoint. Um, but uh, that would have represented maybe three hours. <laughs> By the way, this video is sped up like, um, I don't know, 35 times uh, faster than it was painted. Um, so I come in with this other more quiet wave approach, which I think works quite well. Um, I feel like uh, the perspective is a little bit creative there, but I still feel it does work and um, has a nice feeling, so I opted for just um, leaving it alone. Oh, by the way, this painting will be for sale in my store. I'm going 600 US on this one, uh, even though it was a bit more time than some of my other paintings, but when you extrapolate that into New Zealand dollars, that ain't too bad. You know, I try to keep my uh, my store prices pretty affordable, uh, and uh, you know, uh, it, it's there if you're interested. I think it'd be also, geez, you know, you got to ship this thing; it's going to be pretty big. Uh, I don't know. I hope uh, I hope people that are members actually will take the time to sit through this um, because. You know, it's one thing to be super confident and paint in in, a, in ways uh, that um, reflect that. Um, but uh, to fail, especially when you're at a pretty high level, um, it's good. It's good. Failure is always good. And um, because, uh, again, in fact, I even had this video. I had not this one, but the full-length members area video. I was burning it, and I, I basically just said, "No, nah, I can't live with that wave. I can't live with it. I've got to redo it." So um, let's talk about the steps I took to fix it. Uh, first thing I did was scraped it down um, very uh, carefully. Uh, I got all the raised ridges of paint. Those would have uh, definitely been a problem uh, with the repainting. Um, next, I then, uh, which you just saw it pop up with kind of a grayish bluish thing, uh, and you saw the drawing of the uh, the white waves disappear. Um, what I did there was just covered it over, and I was tempted at that time to go ahead. I had a plan for fixing it, which is what you see me doing now, uh, but. I decided to let that dry and I went even further I let it dry and I hit it with a coat of liquid so mostly for you guys uh, out there because um, some of that um, the greenish and earth colors in the distant peninsula um, looked a bit dull um, and also that just give me a chance to erase things completely if they are going uh, south uh, the end result I'm real happy with and then the sky I was working a bit on it here and there finally uh, it just came to me to to really loosen up and that's what you see me doing now and that was um, awesome I, I it was a, a, a bit of a struggle as well um, but I could see things in the reference that I like that I just hadn't got and and it, one of the main issues I felt was that the sky was like half dark half light um, I wanted to bring more lightness up into the dark areas um, and not so much darkness into the light areas um, and uh, my painting is quite loose for me a lot less controlled um, the end result though oh this is we just got a minute uh, I used to put every painting I did back up on the easel and do a second color pass um, and I was really getting deja vu here from that because the technique you'll see me constantly painting and then wiping with the paper towel and you can get incredibly awesome subtle effects doing that um, the downside of course is um, you can really overwork things you can overdo things you can lose that freshness and this where for the most part I opt to work pretty much a la prima now 
Um, it may be all the pre-mint stages. It may not be all in one day, but I lay down that first color uh, color code and I try to just leave it alone. Um, but there are a lot of techniques that you can employ if you're not if you're not doing that. Mostly that you can put down marks and hit them with the paper towel, make them really subtle. Also, there's the dry brushing. And if you go back to this channel, say 2015, uh, you'll see my my real serious running with dry brushing and how I ruined you know, dozens and dozens of paintings with it. So anyway, that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed uh, seeing me struggle here and I think the end result was totally worth it. It's a quite a beautiful uh, seascape. I'm very proud of it. And until I come back with another video for your education and enjoyment, hopefully for your education and enjoyment, do me a favor, do me a solid. Take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones and stay out of trouble. God bless you and your family.